Hi, my name is Amita, and today we are going to talk about enabling DRAS and OpenStack. Uh, just a little background about Persistent. Persistent is an outsourcing product development company. We have been engaged with uh, all kinds of uh, applications for ISVs, enterprise, and we have been engaged with cloud for about a few years. We have roughly around uh, 600 people working on different kinds of cloud technology and about 100 people working on OpenStack. Hari's here to talk about his experiences with enabling DRAS on OpenStack. Hari. Thank you, Amitabh. Hope you are doing good. So, a disaster recovery as a service is uh, on OpenStack is what we were trying to do. Uh, we tried to enable uh, a disaster recovery as a service on OpenStack. So basically, uh, I would start from what what's a DR? You know, basically go through those things. So, why do we need this in first place on a cloud or on a on premise or on your laptops or something like that? So, disaster can happen anywhere. As you know, on all our clouds or a nodes, compute nodes, your machines can go off anytime. There could be a node failure or there could be a power failure, there could be natural disasters, there could be software errors. You don't know when your instance or a VM goes off. You must have your DR plan or at least the backup plan ready when you are, when you are running typical in, uh, services or business critical services on the top of OpenStack. So this uh, talk is basically about how do we achieve a DR service on the OpenStack for the loads which are on the OpenStack as well as on your premise, on premise or around, on or on your simple private cloud. So why do we need uh, this uh, DRS OpenStack? or rather what I would say, why, why DRAS is required on the OpenStack? See, first, first and foremost thing is to bring new customers to cloud. Basically, that, that, that enables private clouds or the public clouds if you are hosting your, <coughs> your public cloud or own public cloud or a private cloud. So, if you, if, if you subscribe or if you allow uh, subscribers to ask to subscribe for a DRAS, then it would bring you new customers. The second thing is like some, some providers or if you are running an application specific cloud or let's suppose you have uh, a private cloud where in which the data is very critical, you are running some customer services on it and you want to have a backup plan where in which if the node goes off, you just want it to do. So then you, can, you could actually put a DR as a service on an OpenStack cluster, which, which might be a scaled down infrastructure of your original private cloud, and then subscribe the service and subscribe these VMs to actually do. So that's, that's co-located DR infrastructure. And next, as such, we all know, the, for the business continuity, okay, <coughs> then uh, the DR option should be homogeneous uh, environment. So for example, if you, if you have your DR cloud on your OpenStack and if you have a similar DR, uh, the destination DR also on the OpenStack, then it is more uh, susceptible for uh, you know, reliability. So you get the same environment here and you get the same environment there. You don't need to adjust, reconfigure, retry, and you don't have a doubt that it could fail. And then uh, you should have RTO and RPO. You know, many applications have a different RTO and RPO application somebody needs. Okay, in, I need a instance immediately, the replacement instance very immediately. Or some, somebody could say, okay, even if it fails for an hour, but immediately within an hour, it, if it comes, it's okay. So the, those are the four main areas uh, a usual DR as a service and OpenStack would solve. Uh, so let let me just take through the agenda what 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 we are going to do in this particular uh, presentation. So for the first is we will evaluate what are the sources of DRAS. So basically we identify the candidates wherein which uh, you could do a DR to a OpenStack, OpenStack based private or public environments. The second is <coughs> what what 
what methodologies could be used or what techniques could be used such that the open stack environment could be use, uh, used as a dr service and what are the complexities and what are the troubles which are associated around this and then we go through a small evaluation of what all the things uh, today's open stack needs for a dr to be enabled on open stack so so that's the that's one thing <clears throat> and then next we see what are the next steps how do we go ahead and put a full pledged uh, dr as a service on open stack so we, if you see the sources of a dr a dr could be enabled for anything you know it could be on a physical machines or a virtual machines which which runs a traditional kvm or zen hypervisors where you just have your machines there and you wanted to put a dr option to a private cloud open stack based private cloud or a open stack based public cloud then uh, your private cloud itself could have a dr to a public cloud so this is one case where in which you have uh, your applications or workloads running in a very small private cloud or a application specific cloud. So you, you are more concerned about the data and then what you could do is you can say, okay, these VMs you move it to DR, keep, keep, keep your uh, backups there and if, if in case your private cloud fails, you move it to the public cloud. So uh, very basic steps here. Like uh, any DR, if you have to do, like uh, or not only on the open stack or anywhere. So basic D DR is like involving on the source side, you snapshot. So you, you either snapshot or you convert it into a way wherein which you take the data packets or the changes, you know, basically the delta changes to the destination. So whatever is happening at the source must be in some way repeated or replicated at the destination so that's the first step and second step is like you capture these and transport it across a transmission media so the transmission media very well or trivial in these days is like you send it over a wire or a uh, fiber cable or some kind of a process wherein which you you could be able to send this data from source to destination the third thing is you send the data and you have it in the destination safe the third thing is you have to detect that okay the source has failed and now you have to start up so that's 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 one uh, one more step where in which you you can continuously uh, monitor it could be an agio script or something which is monitoring the source and it triggers okay now i am failed and can you please bring it up on the other side next you provision from that particular place so provisioning has certain challenges that could be the recovery time objective or uh, point objective but those are the challenges which are there in this particular step so uh, let me let's just uh, reintroduce the terms which many of us are familiar but uh, for the convenience of uh, uh, everybody you know rto or rpo is like rpo is a recovery point objective wherein which you say okay i if the disaster recovery has happened now how much time before i could get like uh, for example if 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 there is a disaster at this moment okay what is the least point i could get uh, my system from so what's what's what are the unsaved changes i am going to lose and RTO is like if i have a disaster now and i request to uh, give me a backup what in what time I, the replacement service will be available and then delta backups are typically uh, the changes in the data from your last recovery point or last backup point to current backup point so these are the basic things and <clears throat> this is what we we tried and we see it is successful uh, so what what we do as part of it is we took a standard uh, 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 hypervisor which is running a kvm and spawn some virtual machines around and then <coughs> we have a drs service in a virtual appliance and then we have one more appliance which is called as a data data vm so dras service is kind of a uh, landing point wherein which 
all the agents if you have a multiple agents or a multiple sources they come to your uh, dr cloud or the cloud on which the dras is hosted and then uh, the data packets are being sent the dras agent on the source side keeps a config uh, has a configurable way of uh, uh, taking the delta changes so it could be as less as 15 seconds or it could be as good as one day as well so it captures the data delta differences and sends it on a packet on the DRAS service so that's the first step so DRAS agents request the uh, data backup and then DRAS service then what it does is it sees okay what what exact data uh, what exact uh, endpoint is uh, trying to da uh, do a DR or uh, uh, do a backup then it assigns a data VM wherein which it coordinates the underlying storage to save the snapshot so in this alternative what we are proposing is we use the bootable volumes feature of the open stack okay to <coughs> save the DR uh, disks this is because because uh, this is because of two reasons reason number one you if you use anything else your recovery time objective will be more because the moment you send a packet and you keep it uh, keep it up with you and while recovery you need to copy it first to glance and you need to again copy it next to to, to the specific node during the VM boot up. So there are two copies of the same data and if you are trying to uh, copy a <coughs> trying, try, trying to copy a machine of 1 TB or so it would be around half an hour. So if you are considering about a less recovery time then go for the bootable volumes uh, way this, this, uh, this alternative and then <coughs> after the data is backed up so somebody has to trigger uh, the backup so that the triggering is like happens from a user or a script that uh, that triggers the data backup when when you say okay trigger the back, data backup so what what the draw service is draw service does is it goes on checks hey this is this is this is the machine uh, uh, draw service is being uh, has to spawn up so what it does exactly is it it mounts the uh, bootable volume it, it asks it, it issue, issues an overboot commands to to the public cloud or, or the private cloud or a controller so then <coughs> when it is issuing it does take the policies which are predefined or it could be given at the dashboard so it could be a redu reduced flavor or a, or a full flavor or a defined network settings or you can predefine it using a config drive and the replacement instance comes up and it could do a self checks and it is available so we have another alternative where oh, for uh, for people who are not very very conscious on rto if if somebody is okay with uh, a bigger rto and doesn't want to, to use a lot of block storage okay then that's that's alternative to wherein which what we do here is almost the functionality is the same but instead of having two different VMs, one a DAS service and a data VMs scaling out together, auto scaling to those, we use, we leverage the Swift service. So what it does is, the, it's, here it's, it's just the agent, what, what agent periodically does a snapshot and takes the delta differences and pushes it to Swift. And after it pushes it to Swift, it just updates the meta, metadata file saying that, hey, I have updates so and so on to the DRAS service. So it keeps on uh, going on and you could actually con uh, uh, configure after how many DR uh, snapshots are backed up you could match. So periodically on the, so <coughs> on the destination side these snapshots are matched periodically but usually you could uh, uh, keep this on and on going. So what happens is in So in this alternative, when when there is a uh, 
uh, in this alternative when the uh, when when there is a, D, a dr request or a uh, disaster request then the draft service detects which which vm is go, uh, requires to be uh, spawned up and then what what it does is it first merges all the snapshots and makes a feasible uh, and makes a, and ma makes a feasible image out of it and then it first uploads to the glance and after it uh, uploads to the merged merged image and glance and then it starts the compute to uh, spin up the replacement vm and then the replacement vm would, would spin up and be available for the services this approach has a specific advantage that you don't need a <coughs> support from any provider so it could be any vanilla open stack you don't need a change you don't need a lot of uh, resources for the draft service itself to be run so you just need swift you just need uh, a compute the another advantage for with this is if you are in a scenario where in which there is a very less amount of bandwidth that is available for the cloud provider so if you are bandwidth conscious of saving the data you could use the cdn services of the swift and then you could actually back up to a very near location so this will be very useful if you are uh, if you have a, a, a machine that needs to be backed up at a very remote location or a uh, or or like a machine uh, across the uh, instrumentation machines or data machines across the lines of a railways or uh, telecom points or those kind of stuff so if you really want to save data from there you just have a and you have a very small data pipe you you could use a swift and or which is over a cdn service and then you could do that they even then you could be able to recover that data so there are two alternatives which uh, but in this case the rdo will be more than what is in the alternative one so the, there could be two uh, ways okay <clears throat> but rpo this this uh, alternative will be more suitable for things where in which okay you say you back up it one uh, one day once a day or so so uh, the alternative one would be suitable if you want to have a frequent back backups and alternative two uh, which is presented here will be suitable for if you, for cases where in which okay once a day is fine and this is a cheaper solution with respect to the first solution next is, <coughs> there are some challenges which we wanted to uh, specify so while implementing this and while trying this out is one is like the huge data which is involved in when you are moving uh, from the source to destination so if you are writing a uh, disk in intensive programs or if you are saving a big big uh, video files that would mean that your delta files are big and that would mean that you are going to choke the data pipe between the source and the destination cloud that's one one thing uh, uh, which it which it still remains uh, that is still a challenge uh, we didn't find a way wherein which you could uh, slice the uh, delta backups so if if either you send the entire packet a large packet in that particular time or you don't send it but that's that's one challenge and uh, in the rto and rpo uh, times at, at times we see requirements such like you will have to uh, boot within less than a minute so uh, although we we have all those things like applying these delta backups at the destination uh, we are taking a little more than uh, time than less than a one minute so one minute kind of a story or two minutes kind of a story of a rto and rpo are particularly very challenging when there is a lot of data which is generated at the source and next like some people are not ready to change their open stack installations not not even agent they don't want even any agent to sit in their uh, hypervisor or anywhere that's you know that's that's one that's one challenge uh, we wanted to still make it 
working so people are concerned about installing agents at a uh, uh, agents at the source where in which it's like a laptop or a physical services people are concerned about uh, uh, adding more capacity to cinder you, you we will put things on cinder so that's that's one uh, one of the challenge we see we see and uh, application quizzing is uh, one thing when we when we wanted to take this dr to even uh, application quizzing wherein which uh, a dr should be done in group of clusters it was always a challenge because uh, the way you way, the way we used we used a single data pipe and uh, it's like there is no way uh, all the three uh, machines are synchronized so it, there should be some intelligence which is on the agent side also you there in which you group or the clusters or group the vms into a same group and then you when you when you do a uh, dr on the other side you you do a, in a synchronous manner so that's one thing and small some small implementation issues like uh, uh, like trivial open stack style of uh, implementation issues still exist like this is a flag and this is a flag and some security rules you have to add these configuration files and those things and these are the challenges part of it and i would go to next steps next steps is like we wanted to uh, put a incubated project for drs and openstack and then the disk replication today we what we are doing is we are using a disk replication agents on the source and destination but if we have a disk replication service such that okay can you replicate this vm as to a destination or something like that then it would be more useful from when you are doing a dr from openstack and to openstack or vice versa and then like <coughs> the agents uh, story so so today we have a challenge that if we say can you put this agent on a gas vm you guess vm people are very concerned about the security of that because they don't they didn't evaluate it or they or they didn't see what's what's in that so making the dras agents which are making dras agents public and making them as part of a open stack releases is also need to be considered such that you have the agent which is tested uh, tested across your security and you just trust okay if you are if you are okay to run a open stack uh, uh, code you are okay to run the open stack agents as well so that's all from my set so do you have any questions please Um, you talked a lot about um, the infrastructure piece of you know the DR, you know moving a VM, getting it to the DR site, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's other pieces involved, such as um, network configuration. And so, taking a snap of a VM and moving it somewhere is pretty trivial, right? There's loads of ways of doing it, but the actual bringing the VM online and making sure that it's on the right, attached to the right network, the same VLAN is there, if needed be the same AD server, are they pointing to the DNS? Um, and then going a bit deeper, the application configuration points to a certain host name convention. So the, D, the, the domain name, subdomain name has changed, etc., etc. How, how are you planning to deal with that? That's correct. Uh, so, so in that scenario, we wanted to go to the OpenStack way of describing the workload. So, if you uh, we we didn't talk extensively about that because this is uh, this uh, presentation was mainly from uh, you know either if if you are migrating from this uh, if you are migrating from a on premise or a laptop to uh, the destination and here there was a piece which is called as a dashboard okay if the dashboard or the api could actually have this information of the network or so but when you are uh, doing from a open stack to open stack you could always use a config drive uh, the way we use is a config drive or you you could actually write out uh, things around you know the a apis to support the workload description it's not just the uh, it's not only just the uh, network configuration we are con concerned about sometimes there are attached volumes also yeah 
so o there o load balancers uh, correct so so there are many services there are also services which are there so uh, the right way to go about is uh, to have a workload description properly and then when you when you take it to the other cloud you just re reiterate the same workload uh, description so uh, it, it's not only the disk changes because uh, the talk actually considered uh, concentrated on the disk changes and how do you move a vm but actually it it also needs to uh, keep track of the changes in the metadata that happens to the vm also all, also the owner and all those stuff yes i agree with you Ra, on that thank you. yeah thank you so in your option 1 you're proposing to use volume uh, block storage did i hear that you're proposing that the agent should be doing delta storage into block as well so if the you know you're doing vm deltas Yes. Well. Right. Yes. And so, is there also the idea then of reaccumulating those deltas into a into a single boot volume periodically, like you have an option to? Yes. You know, like the delta. You, uh, what we should do is we should keep the uh, bootable volumes exactly in sync. So, uh, if there is a delta uh, packet that is sent from the source, you just extract it then and there. So you don't you don't accumulate the deltas and then uh, when the DR happens you don't apply them. So if you get a delta, you apply that. So have you have you done a proof of concept on that? Yes. And that works. Yes, that works. Okay. And so you've got uh, so you're applying these deltas directly to the to the volume uh, to in, the bootable in, volumes and in, in, in real time. Yeah, at real, uh, uh, you know, in near real time. So I get a okay, delta, yeah, yeah, and you it. you apply. Right. So uh, we ensured that the source disk is exactly replicated by the Cinder disk. So at any given moment, when when it is consistent, so the Cinder is exactly replicate. Uh, Cinder is replicating the source. You know, they both are in sync. So when you boot up you just boot up from the volume so yeah. there is no copy which is involved Got it. so you can get a big uh, you know very less R rto yeah gotcha all right so it's, and then the agent itself you're proposing that that is that's something that you guys wrote in in your proof of concept is that correct uh, in the in our in our proof of concept we have used uh, uh, a agent which is uh, proprietary today yes. so so we wrote our own you wrote your own right right so, and, and so moving this into an OpenStack project, how would you propose to deal with that agent capability? Is that, is that a new service? Is it a component of each program, of each project? How, how would that get delivered? Uh, so the whole concept of uh, this talk is to keep that, uh, keep the changes in the each projects very less so we don't uh, intend to change any project so we just want to put one in new incubated project and say this is going to have the services and we keep the uh, changes in any of the projects to the minimum level possible such that we just use whatever today is on OpenStack. But if that would mean that there are some little changes to be uh, done, we wanted to go ahead and propose that through blueprints and get it done. And on the agent side, agent side should should come into an ecosystem or on a public side where in which there, there would be an agent for uh, a uh, a physical machine, Windows operating system, or there could be a agent for a KVM based hypervisors, Zen based hypervisors, for VM, uh, uh, VMware kind of stuff. So the, all these agents, uh, you know, they, they store their data in a different, different way. So it is the, that intelligence that should come from there. And why uh, a different agent is tomorrow, uh, you know, down the line, we should be able to even back up our mobiles. You know, you have your mobile, you install an agent on a mobile, you send the entire data of a mobile, you have the copy. Someday you lost your mobile, you at least have all the snapshot running on a simulator. You know, that, that's the whole thought, thought process behind uh, why you wanted to put an agent per, uh, you know, per kind of a device. So we're still trying to figure out, uh, you know, how to contribute what we have and uh, whether we need to do, do a different blueprint or, or a different mechanism to distribute uh, what we are writing on the agent side. Still working the details out, but we'd like to see it go out. Okay, point. thank you. Thanks. 
Hello, uh, Trevor hey. Powell, RMS. Uh, interesting talk. Um, I'm, I'm interested in the testing that you guys did. What quantity of VMs have you failed over? Um, and what do you perceive and what services do you perceive an OpenStack will be under stress during a DR failover scenario? Okay. Uh, we tried with uh, five or ten VMs uh, in our lab. So then there are a couple of v, uh, VMs getting uh, uh, backed up uh, regularly. So answering your second question, definitely it is the input data input pipe and the uh, endpoints wherein which your VM is uh, running. So I don't think it will be stressed or stress on any open stack services as such. Uh, either the Neutron or Nova or Cinder or whatever it is. But there would definitely be a stress on the network backplay in which you are taking because if you are uh, backing up several hundreds of VMs and the delta changes, particularly if there are a huge writes on the disks and the disks are, changes are big, so your data pipeline is going to uh, be loaded or stressed and if you have if you don't have the capacity uh, planned enough to that level then your network may go slow but as such it's only a couple of uh, nova requests such that you don't see a big stress on running openstack services or so but you will definitely see the stress on the disks and uh, the disk writes and disk ios and the network, you know, regular network traffic of the OpenStack. Did I answer your question? Yes. Yeah. So I have a question uh, around, um, you talk about uh, how to send Delta from the primary site to the DR site. Right. Do you have any thoughts around how to move back the workload to the primary site after the disaster, the, the, the cause of disaster is removed? Do you keep Deltas in the disaster uh, site as well? You just um, push back the, the deltas to the primary site, or uh, the user have to copy back all the data? So we haven't done that work, right, yet. Yes, we didn't do that work, but uh, uh, that's a very good question. There are some challenges which are involved. So if your source is a virtual machine, and if your source is a KVM kind of a hypervisor, we have no problems moving that back. You just move that back and rename and can turn on it as, a different virtual machine you have all the changes back but you will definitely have a challenge if you if you have turned on a physical machine so there the blocks are different here the blocks are different so it, it depends completely on a very intelligent agent and if you are able to save that metadata also and when it comes back you will have to reapply and you sh you should be able to re reapply on the source so the fail back is still debatable uh, or at least I would should I should say I haven't understood till now, so I haven't have I don't have a way to answer that. So just a just a uh, quick background, right? Persistent also has a, a small uh, disaster recovery as a service offering for SMB, which runs out of a different division, right? And we have learned we have learned and leveraged a lot from there, uh, and we are incorporating all some of the complexities which we have learned in in this experiment, which we are doing to see how we can take what we have and move it on OpenStack. Hi, Hi I'm concerned um, somewhat on policies. Um, what kind of uh, retention policy you might have, especially when uh, VMs come and go, uh, effectively they no longer have any use in life and you terminate them. How do you clean up the backups, otherwise you're swift store is going to continually grow and eventually run out of space. Um, likewise, how do you um, determine, again, via policies, which ones are loved VMs versus the ones you should ignore and not do any DRs on? Uh, well, as a DR as a service, we don't define that particular policy. So it's it's up to it's up to the configurator or it's up to the user uh, to choose which VMs to be uh, having a DR or other. So, but I, I take the I take your first question: How much time you are going to keep your data? 
as long as the dr is required we we just we keep the data and periodically we will merge we can merge the snapshots so that it doesn't take different different uh, objects there so that we should be able to uh, do it programmable and configurable so did i answer your question so uh, one one more way to deal with this, right? And this is again from the experiences uh, from our our cloud business, which we are offering as a service to customers, right? We provide a, we basically sell storage, not VMs, and in in that particular practice or that particular product, right? And we provide a mechanism by which we can say, hey, you you know, this is the max if if you are interested in. 100 terabytes worth of storage, and you know, at any given time, you can spin up n number of VMs. You know, that's what we allow, and and we define set of policies on uh, uh, what uh, what types of VM and and snapshots can be deleted from the system. And it's completely customer driven at that point. Yeah, you briefly uh, mentioned uh, some sort of replication engine or a generic replication engine in OpenStack. Could you elaborate a bit on that and add any thoughts about uh, what sort of APIs you might have for a generic interface, maybe different replication engines or? Well, uh, uh, that's uh, that was the thing we are still uh, going and we, we are thinking. But what, what we would need is like, uh, we all agree that th there, there must be some kind of a replication uh, that should happen from the source and source to destination. In in a scenario wherein it is open stack to open stack, the replication becomes more uh, prominent or it, it is more visible from the functionality part of it. One, if if I am a op, uh, open stack endpoint, I should have a capability to push my changes to the destination cloud. So that that's one capability today today's OpenStack doesn't have. So that we need to add that if if you are acting as a source, you should be able to write to any kind of a destination. Okay, there is a change that is happening in the dis, uh, attachment. You know, let it be metadata. Or so you you do a, um, a, a push of that, and then uh, when you are on the destination side, you should be able to take different different replicator connections. You know, you should actually support a replicator plugins to the OpenStack such that you, if you have a plugin and you have a replication endpoint, you know you could bring third party or a commercial solutions such that you don't need to worry about replication piece or you need you don't need to have a data channel through your network. Network. So you you can leverage the commercial very efficient things there. So when you have this uh, DRAS as a uh, service, as an OpenStack project, then you can always have a replication plugin. So you define a DRAS and you could have a uh, replication hooks and in the hooks you could choose what replication algorithm or license or whatever, whatever public open source or licensed products there. So that's, that's, what, that's how we, we are thinking to put that across. Any other questions? Thank you very much Thank for you. attending. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. <laughs>